Uh, hi, I'm Skinny Cheeks, and this is my Stamina Templar DPS Guide. Not a whole lot has changed from the previous patch, but there are a few tweaks here and there that I want to go over. So for this video, I'll go through the top races, our Mundus Stone, the food, drinks, and potions we'll be using, champion points, a uh, discussion on penetration, the gear options, our skill bars, the rotation, and then we'll end with a few clips on the trial dummy. One quick thing before we start, if you want to see how you can help support this channel and keep these guides coming, stop by my Patreon page, I'll have a link in the description. There are ways to support for as little as $3 and it really does help. I can't thank you all enough that have already helped out with it. Alright, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into it. For the races, Khajiit, Dark Elf, and Orc are the top three options. I plugged in an example setup into UESP's build editor to get the effective weapon power for each of the races. Just note this will vary a bit with different builds plugged in, but I have it linked in the description if you want to mess around with it. So effective weapon power is essentially just if all stats were converted to simply weapon power, where would that number end up? So things like crit chance, crit damage, stamina, etc. So the top three here are all within less than 1% of each each other and Khajiit and Dark Elf are actually so close that if you swap to Krog from Slime Craw, the order of the two flip flops. To put it into perspective, on my 112k DPS parse, it would have probably been under a 100 DPS difference between Khajiit or Dark Elf, so really whichever you prefer is fine. And even Orc is really close behind. If you decide not to go with one of the top three, unless you're trying to get high scores, you can clear any content at a high level with any race option. For the Mundus Stone, we'll be going with the Thief. We have access to so much crit damage now, it is hard to pass up the Thief. I can see the Shadow being really close if you're using a set like Advancing Yokita or Leviathan, but for the Reliquin plus Deadly Strike combo we're using, Thief is the best option. For the food, I highly recommend Bystat, Health plus Stamina if you are able to sustain it. It offers great damage with a lot of health. There's no recovery bonus though, so you will be relying a lot on your group for sustain. For a big boost to that sustain and the same amount of damage, you can also go with Lava Foot. This has no health bonus on it though, so depending on what content you're doing, you might be a little squishy. A nice middle ground between these two is Arteum Takeaway Broth. This is a little more expensive, but gives you health, stamina, and recovery. But it's not as much damage as either of the other options due to the lower stamina pool. There is also a cheaper version of this called Dubious Camoran Throne. The stats on it aren't the greatest, but it can be run if gold is an issue. For our potions, we're using the standard weapon power potions. The major savagery it provides is a little redundant with the bar setup we're using, so you can just run the ones with major brutality and stamina return if you want. However, I usually just craft the ones that have all three so they work on other characters too if I want to swap them over, or if I end up with a different bar setup, it still works all around. If you do want to use trash potions for some easier content or run heroism potions for certain encounters, just make sure you either have a tank casting igneous weapons, or if you're a werewolf, you can slot Hercene's Rage for the passive major brutality. This does work even if you are not in werewolf form. For 12 person veteran trial content, you will be expected to run the weapon power potions in most groups. For our champion points, the slottables we'll be taking are Backstabber, Deadly Aim, Master at Arms, and Biting Aura. I think Fighting Finesse is really close to these four and should definitely be slotted in scenarios where Backstabber can't be used. However, Deadly Aim was consistently giving me better results when testing over Fighting Finesse. And I think it may be due to it boosting Reliquin while Fighting Finesse does not, since Reliquin can't crit. So in situations where you aren't wearing Reliquin, I bet Fighting Finesse will outperform Deadly Aim. Ultimately, try them out though and see what works best for you. But remember that even though it doesn't look like we have much single target damage based on our ability slotted, you can't leave out our light attacks, the burning light proc, Reliquin, our enchantments, status effects, and our barb trap. These are all single target damage. So three of our four top hitting abilities are single target. So when you look at it like that, it's easier to see how deadly aim can do so well. For the next topic, I did want to begin with a discussion on penetration before we got into the gear options. So some of your choices in the setup are going to be dependent on your group and what armor debuffs are present. Remember, you need to make up whatever your group is lacking and ultimately reach that 18,200 penetration mark. So worst case scenario, you should have at least Major Breach, Minor Breach, and the Crusher enchantment brought from your tank. That will leave you 7170 penetration to make up through a variety of ways such as your champion points, a one piece Krog, a sharpened trait on your weapon, a mace or a maul, or whatever combination of these you need to get there. 
If you are lucky enough to have Alkosh and Trimmer Scale going also, this brings it down to only 1775 pin that you need to make up. So that's pretty easily done with just your CP and just one of the previously listed with penetration on it. And then there are other debuffs that your group may have if you are really lucky, like a Torugs infused Crusher enchantment or a Sork using Crystal Weapon. But ultimately, I can't give you a setup that will be best for 100% of scenarios, so it will be up to you to consult with your group. And if you aren't sure, having some extra pin is usually going to be pretty nice as uptimes aren't 100% all the time, and especially for pickup groups as they probably aren't going to be fully optimized. For the trial dummy specifically, we do have Major Breach, Minor Breach, Torg's Infused Crusher, and Alkosh, leaving us 3222 penetration to bring. So I'm making this up with the 700 from CP, a one piece Krog and a sharp offhand. This does put us a little bit over the cap by about 600 or so. So part of that Krog piece is wasted. So if you wanna drop the Krog piece for a slime crawl piece, the results would be very similar. You'd be a little short of the cap in that scenario, but you'd be getting the full bonus out of your one piece slime crawl instead of a partial bonus from the Krog. In actual content though, if you're getting the full bonus from the Krog piece, I would definitely go that route. For the dummy, I couldn't tell a difference either way. Okay, I think that segues pretty well into the gear. I won't be going into great detail into what each of these sets do, more so just how we're gearing up. For more info on the current gear, including the top monster sets, arena sets, and 5P sets, I do have a video out updated for Blackwood, so make sure to check that out. So for our boss setup, as I mentioned, we are doing a one-piece slime craw or Krog. For the body, our first choice here is Reliquin. This is the strongest single target set in the game. For our leg slot, we're going with the Harpooner's Waiting Kilt. This is situational, but really good on many encounters in the game. And then for our front bar set, we'll be going with the Deadly Strike Daggers. And refer back to the penetration section if you need to, but you may end up with a mace here instead of one of the daggers. You could also do a two-handed maul here. Precise would be the trait if you go that route. It isn't quite as good for single target damage as daggers, but I'll get into the skill section in a bit. And for more AoE heavy encounters, I can see the two-handed front bar being a pretty nice option. And then for our back bar set, the best option is the Maelstrom Bow, but the Maelstrom Inferno Staff or Black Rose Prison Dual Wield can do pretty well also. Then I also listed our second options for the gear sets here as well for scenarios where Reliquin might not be a great option. So still boss encounters, but possibly ones with heavy AoE focus or lots of target swapping where you can't effectively keep Reliquin up well. So in those scenarios, we'll move Deadly to the body and we'll be front barring Berserking Warrior. If you don't have Berserking Warrior, you could also pair Deadly Strike with something like Zogvin or Leviathan. For the enchantments, all max stamina on the body, weapon damage on the jewelry, weapon damage on the bow, and then a flame plus a poison enchant on the dual wield. I had a hard time telling the difference between this and running poisons on the front bar, so you could run the crafted or crown poisons on the daggers instead if you want, it does roughly the same amount. And then finally, on fights where you can't run the kilt, you can swap your reliquin shoulders to the leg slot and run both Krog and Slime Krog together. Or if you want to run a mythic ring like the Death Dealer's Fate, you could move that deadly ring to your leg slot and then slot the ring. Or the same thing with the Pale Order ring if you're running solo. Lots of wiggle room here to move pieces around to make other ones work. All right, now we'll go through the skills. So real quick before we start, if you are curious about some of these skills or what skill lines they come from, definitely check out esoskillbook.com. It is my go-to for looking up abilities. Always up-to-date info there. So on the front bar, we have Camo Hunter, Silver Shards or Silver Leash, Barbed Trap, Biting Jabs, Ring of Preservation, and Flawless Dawnbreaker. And then on the back bar, we have Camo Hunter, our back bar dot, so either Endless Hail, Elemental Blockade, or Deadly Cloak, depending on which back bar set we're running. Then Ritual of Retribution, Radiant Ward, Ring of Preservation, and Shooting Star. Most of these fighter skill abilities are just here to passively boost our weapon damage, so you can definitely flex some out for other abilities if you need. I'd start with the back bar ones, and then if you need even more skills, you can swap out the front bar ones as well. Restoring Focus is a great skill and one I'd probably usually slot on my back bar over Ring of Preservation. It gives extra sustain, resistances, and heals. Really so much crammed into one ability. I didn't need the sustain for my dummy parse, but the benefits of it in most content will outweigh the little bit of extra weapon damage on your back bar from Ring of Preservation. Radiant Ward is mostly just here for the passive 10% crit damage boost, but it's actually not a terrible shield either if you find yourself in a bind. Then Shooting Star is not a must as our ultimate, but does seem really nice to open up with over a Dawnbreaker or a Ballista ultimate. You could do Empowering Sweep here or Ballista though if you don't have Shooting Star unlocked. 
If you're doing a staff back bar, I definitely do Fiery Rage here instead of Shooting Star to open up with a Destro Ultimate. In the gear section, I did briefly mention running a two-handed front bar for some more AoE heavy encounters, and this is because Stampede did get a really nice buff for the Blackwood patch. I didn't find it to be worth it to lose the dual wield stats and the jabs cast to run Stampede for purely single target damage, but I think running it in place of Ring of Preservation could be really nice, especially for four-man dungeon and solo stuff. The added mobility of having a gap closer Stampede on your front bar should help a lot to navigate the battlefield, and then it leaves behind such a strong ground AOE with it. It does like 10k DPS, so I definitely see myself going this route for a lot of the dungeon stuff. But for purely single target boss fights, I think the extra stats you get with dual wield, with daggers, plus just more jabs. I mean, that shows you just how strong jabs is that a dot that does 10k DPS is almost not worth running. But really, ultimately up to you and your situation, it's definitely a great skill to have. Repentance is another really great skill that you can put in one of those flex spots. You get extra recovery just for having it slotted, provided you aren't already receiving those buffs from an outside source. And on fights with multiple enemies dying, the sustain boost you get from it is insane. And then finally, the last skill I'll mention is Power of the Light. Unfortunately, the damage from this isn't really worth it over a single cast of biting jabs, and the debuff it gives, Minor Breach, is now redundant as tanks have that packed into their Pierce Armor ability. However, casting this ability does trigger the Illuminate passive, so if you find yourself being the only Templar in a group that does have Magicka damage dealers, it would be helpful for you to run this ability and try to cast it at least once per rotation to make sure you keep that Minor Sorcery buff up for your teammates. If there is already a Magicka Templar or a Templar support in the group though, or you're in an all stam group, then you shouldn't need to worry about this. All right, now we'll go through the rotations. Still probably one of the easier ones in the game, I'd say, and pretty much works the same way no matter what back bar dot you're using. So we'll be opening up with Endless Hail and Barbed Trap, and then start our light attack weaving with our Shooting Star, Ritual of Retribution, and then we'll just jab on our front bar until Endless Hail is running out and we need to reapply it. If you are using Elemental Blockade or Deadly Cloak as your back bar dot instead of Endless Hail, we'll swap those two opening abilities and instead start with the Barbed Trap cast and then start our Light Attack Weaving with either Elemental Blockade or Deadly Cloak. Then the remaining rotation is just cast our two back bar dots together and then jab on the front bar until they need to be reapplied. Whenever our trap is about to run out, we'll replace one of our jabs with reapplying it. And whenever our Dawnbreaker ultimate is ready, we'll use that in place of one of the jabs as well. This is a little different from last patch as I was doing all shooting star ultimates, but this patch with Reliquin now scaling with weapon damage, I think the Dawnbreaker's 300 weapon damage for 20 seconds is a little bit better sustained damage than the shooting star ultimate. It's really close though. Then if you're running Stampede, you can either activate it once every time you go to your front bar for an easier rotation, or you can keep it up dynamically every 10 seconds. If you do have Deadly Cloak as your back bar dot, that's also 10 seconds, so that and Stampede will line up perfectly. All right, that's going to do it for this guide. I want to give a big thanks to my current Patreon supporters. If you'd like to see how you can help support the channel through Patreon, I'll have a link in the description below. And a special thanks to Nicholas, Simon, Privy League Guild on PlayStation's EU server, Cougar's Bay in the Cougar Town Guild, Gandalf Legris, Blondie Joes, Stridig, and Delta. I'll close this one out with a few parses using the setups I showcased. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'll see you all in the next one. Uh, bye.
information. 